confession. You know me, modesty, still I'm taking a bow. So say it loud and say it proud, we're all Keynesians now. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. I made my case, Freddie H. Listen up, can you hear it? I'll begin in broad strokes, just like my friend Keynes. His theory conceals the mechanics to change. That simple equation, too much aggregation, ignores human action and motivation. Yet it continues as a justification for bailouts, payoffs, by polls with machinations. You provide them with cover to sell us a free lunch. Then all that we're left with is debt and a bunch. If you're living high on that cheap credit hog, don't look for a cure from the hair of the dog. Real savings come first if you want to invest. The market coordinates time with interest. Your focus on spending is pushing on thread. In the long run, my friend, it's your theory that's dead. So sorry there, buddy, if that sounds like invective. Prepare to get schooled in my Austrian perspective. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play more interest no, rates. it's the animal spirit. All right, guys, welcome back to Wolf Hat Cryptos and MMG Invest. First of all, this is not financial advice. Consult your financial advisor. I am not your financial advisor. Equities. Uh, cryptos are extremely volatile, extremely risky. Once this video is uploaded, it's pretty much obsolete because prices tend to pump and dump. They're extremely volatile. Always have stops in place and your emotions out. And um, that's about it, I think. All right, so I will talk about... The Bitcoin price first, because some of you, it's all you care about. And then um, I will talk about the stock market and um, everything else that's going on. This one, this video, I'm just kind of going to free ball it here and uh, see where it takes me. All right, so I posted on uh, the 25th. Today is the 27th, so two days ago. I was stopped out of Bitcoin and I was stopped out, well, basically at 3,900. That's where I placed my stop. I said that in my last Bitcoin video as well. And uh, ever since then, the price of Bitcoin has been falling. So let me real quick get Bitcoin out of the way. Here's the four hour chart. This is starting to look like some sort of head and shoulders. It's not really a head and shoulders, but you know, the pattern, it's similar to one. And uh, this is not good. Now the RSI, MACD and all those uh, oscillators, the volume indicators, they are a, a bit oversold on the four hourly. But what I'm really more interested in is the daily. And the daily just broke through what used to be major overhead resistance, and that's very negative. Uh, the MACD is going to cross for the daily, and the RSI has a lot, a long way to go to reset itself. And the MACD hasn't even crossed yet, but it's going to. So that's the daily on Bitcoin. So what does that mean? That means I expect, let's go to the weekly real quick. I mean, the MACD and the RSI, they're divergent to one another. So that's not telling me much. The weekly doesn't look that great. Basically, it doesn't matter. I'm just looking at the daily here. As of right now, I expect the price to revisit around 3200 We'll see if it holds up there. If it doesn't, then the next major support is 2800 which is under 3000 And um, it looks like we could easily fall to 3200 We'll see where it goes from there. By the way, guys, if you only watch my videos, it's not going to help you all that much. If you do, go, click on the link below the video for the free newsroom. I keep you guys updated with my thoughts and opinions. and I literally tell you guys what I'm doing live, right, every day. So my last Bitcoin chart that I posted in the newsroom 
Well, I was still waiting on the sidelines for uh, the Bitcoin shorts to get squeezed and to possibly push the price back above, th above 3900 and that's when I was going to buy back in. If the price went back above to 3900 and broke that resistance, but it didn't, obviously the price broke down because right now we're sitting at 3590 So I don't see any indication of bullishness as of right now for the short term. Here's the daily on uh, the longs and the shorts. Looks like the longs are falling with the shorts, or they were for a second. You know, the price can still recover from 3200 if these shorts continue to get squeezed while the longs catch a bid. So for the next few days and weeks, I mean, we're just going to have to watch the price of Bitcoin and the longs and the and versus the shorts and see how that plays out. Overall, the one thing that I am worried about, and I have to tell you guys, there are no moving averages on this chart. Let me upload another Bitcoin chart. So the 200 week moving average on Bitcoin. It has never ever it has never been broken and that is this white line this thick line it does go lower down here but it's not showing up on the charts so I don't want to see Bitcoin break below 3000 because if it does and it keeps falling. I mean, yes, there is 2800 and there's some possibility the price could recover from there and that'll be the bottom. But the fact that this rebound broke down so quickly and so early, it didn't even, it didn't even go above 4300. That is a huge sign of weakness. And I was hoping we would have gotten that V bottom reversal and that would have put in the bottom for Bitcoin, but it didn't. And uh, that's just what's happening right now. So, 2800 if not that, and we break below the 200-week moving average. This is a weekly chart, by the way. The, the next bullish trend line is all the way down around, well, uh, <laughs> um, 1100 So... Not good. What I'm trying to say is below 2800, I don't see any support. And I like I just don't see any support until we get back down around 1300 and 1100. That's the only next support. And that pretty much wipes out the entire bull rally and gains from 2017. So that's why I was bullish on this huge uh dead cat bounce now. Now now this turned out to be a dead cat bounce because it failed on Bitcoin the past few weeks. It was nice for some nice gains. I mean, we had some nice gains on the altcoins and Bitcoin. But um, the fact that this just failed is very, very bad. Not good. So, the, I mean, the best we could hope for is 2,800 holds. And the price gets back above the 200-week moving average, and it trades sideways for a very long time. And then it starts trending back up. But if this 200-week moving average is broken, then that's not good. That's very bad. That's it's very not good. I don't know what to think at that point. Because it, it that could put us in a... It, even longer bear market that could last another year or two years. I don't know. But I mean, my, I do have uh January, was it January? When did I estimate? Okay. June of 2019 time wise, if you compare it to the 2014 bear market, 
Yeah, so if this bear market lasts as long as the 2014 bear market, then in June of uh, 2019, the price should be recovering. But if the price seriously falls below the 200-week moving average, which it has never done really before, I mean, it's fallen below it, but it was bought up quickly right afterwards. But if the price falls below it again, and it's not bought up within the same week or within like two weeks of it falling down there. Um, then I am very bearish. Then I don't know if the market can recover or if it ever will. At that point, I really don't know. And then that it's then it gets, you know, scary. Then everyone's very doubtful. Um, yeah, so... Let's hope the 200 day, 200 week moving average could hold the price up. And I'm telling you that's around, that's anywhere between 3,100 and 2,800 area. And let's hope the price does not break below that. All right, guys, let's get into the stock market. All right, here's a uh, S&P 500 daily chart. So you can see we had a huge bounce. I did post in the free newsroom that uh, yesterday, yesterday morning, I believe, NASDAQ, E-mini 100, and Russell 2000. I moved my stops higher. Uh, where is it? Here it is. All right, NASDAQ, E-mini 100, Russell 2000. Daily charts, I'm going long for a swing trade, placing stops a little bit a little bit below buy-in price. This was uh, the 26th at uh, 9.54 a.m. So... I bought the dip on the Russell and the E-mini NASDAQ futures and it was a good dip buy I'm still in the money I did not get stopped out so I did move my stop a little bit higher because earlier today the price was pulling back so I basically I just wanted to cover my my fees and I didn't want to lose any money I just wanted to break even so here's the nasdaq and people are like well why is it bouncing i thought this is it the crash uh. <laughs> um well yeah it is the crash but you know it's not gonna crash like straight down in a straight line it's gonna have swings back up as it's going down so here's the nasdaq four hour chart e mini i placed my uh buy around down here around 6,000 and then it pulled back early in the morning and then it rallied the last hour of the market and I placed my stop above my entry price and I was close but I didn't get stopped out and I'm still in this trade I'm still long the e-mini 100 NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 All right, and there are ETFs I trade not the actual futures I trade ETFs and you can leverage up, right? But if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have like, I don't know, at least five years of experience, I wouldn't play around with leverage. Anyways, so I'm long now, right? But that doesn't mean that um, that the stock market's not going to crash. I just happen to go long in uh, for now, for the short term, for a swing trade. I did put in resistance at uh, 6,500 on the E-mini, uh, 100, and... Um, 138 on the Russell 2000 all right there is resistance up there and that's when I'm gonna start getting nervous or, or I am going to take profits and I don't I don't even expect the price to get all the way that high I will keep moving my my stop higher and higher as a trailing stop right you could do it manually or you could put in percentage basis or dollar basis that's for uh, 
I guess the more advanced guys, but it's not really that advanced. It's not that hard to understand. You just move a stop loss, right, up higher and higher to lock in your profits when the price starts pulling back. Because you're not always in front of the computer unless you sit there all day, and I don't suggest you should do that. I mean, I sit, you know, most of the day, well, half of the day in, in my office, but I'm doing research actually most of the time, and I'm glancing at the charts. All right, so let's go back to S&P 500. This is, uh, everyone looks at the S&P 500 as uh, the benchmark for the stock market, all the equities in the stock market, right? So this is the daily chart. I placed a Fibonacci. Now, people are like, well, this was just a correction or a pullback. It's nothing out of the norm. It's just, you know, a little pullback in a bull market. And that's what everyone's thinking. Not me. I think the all-time high and the top is in. And what I think this is, is a dead cap bounce. Or a possible um, correction back up to the upside. A relief rally. Whatever you want to call it. A, um, a reversal. But not really a reversal. It's not going to go high. It's not going to go back into a bull market. All right, in my opinion. And I'm going to make a separate video talking about all the fundamentals because I don't want to make this video like a three hour long video. I, I might make that actually after this video. Depends how I feel. And um, yeah, so here's the daily. And this is what I did. I put a Fibonacci on here. And let me uh, take this to a three day chart so you can see everything. All right, so if I remove this air so you guys can see the price, it's right there. I put a Fibonacci, and I started the Fibonacci retracement all the way from uh, the beginning of 2009 when the central banks started printing money and bailed out the banks. So here's the mortgage-backed security crisis, the crash, the crash of 2008-2009. And I took the Fibonacci from here and I moved it all the way up to the all-time high here of the S&P 500. And you can see that on a 23%, 23.6% retracement, that is exactly where the price bounced. And guys, people who don't believe in technical analysis, they're, I mean, they're full of crap. It's because they don't know how to read charts or use technical analysis. They never learned or they're just really bad at it. Some people are just bad at it. You know, it's not, I truly believe you, you have to be kind of um, the person to enjoy this. Or maybe you have to have um, an art based mind. Like you think from the left side of the brain, not the right. Um, there's people who use algorithms who are better with algorithms who look at numbers and tickers I'm more of a visual learner, so it's easier for me. All right, so The price bounced from the, the 23.6 percentile Fibonacci and uh, That makes perfect sense. It's what that's why we have the Fibonacci retracement Usually we get bounces at these major fibs, right? And not just that, look at that. There's actual support. There's a cluster of price action giving it some support right at that Fibonacci. Down here at the 20 at the 38.2% Fibonacci, there's a cluster of price action which acts as resistance and support, but when the price is coming back down, it acts as a major support. So I will be looking as this market continues to crash in the coming months and years. This will be another uh, major support that the market's going to come down to, all right? And then if we look further into the future, there will be another support of 50% Fibonacci down at uh, 1,800 on the S&P 500. And then finally, the 61.8 percentile Fib at 1,500, all right? So that's why I bought the dip because of technicals and support levels and I'm not the only one who sees this people see this traders see this uh, bots algorithmic bots see this and Donald J Trump or is it J I'm not sure D Donald Trump saw it <laughs> so he probably asked someone I don't know he probably asked Steve Mnuchin when's a good time to send out a tweet to my following so they buy the dip <laughs> 
and we can keep the market higher. And I, I honestly, I'm disappointed in Trump for doing that because, for one, his followers, his supporters, his voting base, <laughs> they, they, anyone who listened to him and bought the dip because of him, I bought the dip not because of his tweet, but I bought the dip because of technicals. And he probably, you know, knew about the technicals because he has advisors and he and he saw some support and you know he tweeted out buy the dip and a lot of people did buy the dip and now the price is going back up and i don't really think trump's tweet really had anything to do with this uh bounce it's just the technicals all right and but the problem is trump tweeted that because he's He's scared. He's panicking. He doesn't want the stock market to keep crashing, right? So he wanted to put in a bottom to this uh, crash. And he uh, he didn't, but the support level did, right? So, listen. The all-time high, I believe, is in. If the price could get back above 2800 then I will start thinking that I am wrong. But I don't think the price is going to get back above... 2600 so to me this is just a dead cap bounce uh some short-term price action uh on a in a bear market listen we did fall also 20 percent if you actually take a ruler and measure this it was about well wow um wow from actually it, it it was an it was actually a 25 percent i thought it was 20 percent let me zoom in because it's not as accurate all right so from the all-time high let me take a ruler and measure this one more time so i don't look like an idiot all right Yeah, it was 20%. So I had to zoom in. So it was a exactly a 20% drop. And guess what happens after the market from the all-time high falls 20%? It's textbook. You are in a bear market. So everything came into play, right? It was the perfect storm, you could say, for a correction back up to the upside or a reversal or a dead cap bounce. Uh, the technicals, the support line, the Fibonacci, Trump's tweet, and another thing, the plunge protection team. Do you get, listen? If you if you guys have ever read uh, Jim Rickards' books, he has good books. Jim Rickards is like an economist. He also worked at uh, Long Term Capital Management, which was this huge firm in the '90s, which almost uh, crashed the entire stock market because it became so big. It's a long story, though. Uh, he used to work for them. And then he was like an advisor to the Pentagon. And he would go, because the Pentagon and the government, right, sees the stock market and, and the, the economy as a national state of, not emergency. It, it's, um, it, you know, it's, they view it as a, um, as a, uh, well, the economy, if it crashes, right, they view that, the, the defense industry views that as a major threat, right? So um, Jim Rickards, an economist, he, he's written a lot of great books, actually. I enjoy his books. Um, he would go to the Pentagon and he would advise them on the economy and whatnot. And they also did studies on uh, insider trading after, like, uh, 9-11. And the, they did studies on... Um, all kinds of things like that. Anyways, um, so he he advised the Pentagon that where was it? if we look at the interactive yield curve right here, you can see that the yield is flattening out. Now it's artificially the short term debt. Is artificially still pegged down around two and a quarter percent and that's because the Fed hasn't risen it higher but if the Fed didn't exist let's pretend the Federal Reserve the central planners that's why we don't really have a free market didn't exist then um, 
the short-term interest rate might actually be even or higher than the long-term debt. So originally the long-term debt, the interest on it is higher because you're holding government debt for a longer period of time. So you should be paid more because you're holding debt for longer. Your money's not doing anything and the risk is much greater the longer you hold someone else's debt, right? So you can see that it's flattened a lot here. And you could pretty much anticipate if the Fed didn't, if the Fed never, you know, artificially manipulated interest rates, the short term would be higher than the long term. You can see in 2008, right here, or 2007, 2008, the short term interest rate, and it was pegged down back then as well, actually went higher than the long term than the 10 year. So once the two year goes higher than the 10 year, that's an inverted yield curve. And that signals you have like six to nine to 18 months before a recession. You can see right now, this is, uh, you know, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, end of 2018, it is flattening out. See? So it's in this trend isn't going to change. It's it's going to get inverted. And that's when the and this is why the market's really falling and crashing. And it's not a full blown crash yet, guys. It's just really a correction. But I think we're this is the beginning. OK, now, how long is this going to play out? I, I don't know. I don't think it. Listen, this could take years, years for the price let me go to a weekly chart on the s p let me take off my script so we can see better i mean we're all the way up here see that this was the the bottom in 2009. we have a long way to go and it's not going to fall down there in one week okay it's not going to fall down even in like six months this is going to take a few years to play out, to fall all the way back. I mean, if the market crashes all the way down to the 61.8% Fibonacci, that is actually a typical recession that the United States sees, That's that the United States has been seeing in recent decades, okay, since like the Great Depression. So this is still somewhat normal, right? Now, if the market crashes past the 61.8, that's when we start seeing in massive amounts of inflation, uh, the government and pensions and everything just blowing up, and we start seeing Venezuela-style stuff and Banana Republic, okay? And um, if, the, if, if we start falling down to the 78.6% Fibonacci, this will be extremely, extremely painful. I'm talking more than likely you will lose your job and all your neighbors. All right. If we actually fall past the 2009 bottom, that is the end of empire stuff. That is like the collapse of the Roman Empire. Okay. Now that I've, I, I, now that I've said that, okay, there is a thing that's going to pop. There's another another uh, situation that could happen, right? What they could do is just print so much money, like Venezuela, right? So what would happen is the stock market in fiat terms and dollar terms actually could keep going higher and higher. But in the real world, your dollars are like losing value like every day. And uh, the stock market will keep going higher, but inflation will start running rampant. It'll start, it'll be runaway inflation. Like, imagine the price of everything right now five times higher. And then your quality of living is falling, the economy is falling apart, but the stock market, in a way, is going up. But you're still losing money, even if you're still in the stock market, because inflation is going to erode and eat away any of your gains from holding stocks or whatever. I don't even think that's going to happen. Um, uh, traders and investors are too smart. Uh, they will, I don't think that's what's going to happen. What is going to happen is 
gold. So here's gold on the weekly. There was a cup and handle. I drew this. Drew this a while ago. I drew this at the beginning of December. I started drawing this actually a little bit prior. So I, I started drawing this like maybe a month ago. And um, I expected gold to break out, right? And it did. And it's heading for my blue equilibrium line and this major resistance line. And that is exactly at 1300. Now I do expect gold to pull back. Matter of fact, on the daily chart, uh, with my indicator here, there's a nine cell indicator, and it's going to pull back for one to four days, or maybe even longer. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see how far the pullback is. And I am actually, I well, I've I've closed my gold positions. And well, the ETFs, not my mining stocks, not my long-term holds. I'm still holding those, but the one, but the ETFs that I trade that are leveraged, I closed them today as well, like right before the close, because I do expect a pullback on gold, all right, and silver for the short term, for the next few days, maybe a few weeks, and that'll probably be your last opportunity to load up, and that is why I will. Um, open up to the public my mmg invest website with the newsletter journal and some uh analysis of of uh st mining stocks which could seriously be life-changing all right guys also this indicator i will it will be free and the trading academy it will be free with my mmg invest um journal newsletter and research analysis when I launch that website in the coming days and uh, weeks, I, I'm trying to launch it the first in 2019, but um, uh, we'll see if I could do it by then because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to launch some half-ass report. I will launch it the, uh, uh, soon, though, probably within the next two weeks. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for now. I will make another video going into uh, the fundamentals and uh, why the all-time high is in for the stock market. So stand by for that. I just wanted to make this update video. If you guys enjoyed this, if you guys learned something, please um, give it a thumbs up. Uh, share write something in the comment section that helps my YouTube channel as well guys and I do answer your questions if you guys have questions in the comment section and uh, share my videos on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you can I would really appreciate it and uh, till next time guys